Today I'm going to show you how to make a superfood that'll last a lifetime without refrigeration. And it's so nutritious, you'll never have to stockpile another food. The food's called pemmican, and it was widely in use by the natives of North America and also by the Western explorers who would go for months without contact with civilization. In the 19th century, even British soldiers had an iron ration of four ounces of pemmican. Many of these iron rations were found intact and edible as much as 50 years later. So let's just avert our gaze from modern survival thinking for a minute and let's think about how the guys who explored the West 150 years ago did it. Now that's exactly the kind of stuff I found in this 350 page book called The Lost Ways. It's probably the only survival book I've actually enjoyed reading and you won't believe the survival things we've lost to history. Now I found the pemmican recipe on page 48 and I decided to give it a go. Natives used whatever was available to them at the time. Bison, elk, moose, deer, but nowadays people just use what they can buy. You just need to remember to select a low-fat red meat and beef is perfect for this. So you'll need six pounds of beef, two pounds of rendered beef tallow, and a third of a cup of strawberries or blueberries. And that's it. Don't include nuts, seeds, vegetable oils, grains, beans, or dairy products of any kind. Now the first step is to dry the meat and blueberries. First you need to slice the meat very thin. You can use a very sharp knife like this one, or you can keep the beef in the freezer a few hours before slicing it. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can set the oven to the lowest possible temperature, around 130 degrees, and put the strips of meat directly on the rack. So now place a tin foil on the right side of the rack and spread the blueberries out to dry with the meat. Place the rack back inside. Crack the oven door to prevent moisture buildup. Let this dry for about 15 hours or until it's crispy. 150 years ago, people dried their meat by building a wooden pyramid over a small fire and hanging the meat slices on that. After 15 hours, this is what you should get. Toss it in the food processor until it becomes a powder. Do the same with the blueberries. In the old days, they grind it with a rock to crush it into a powder. Generally, well-dried meat will weigh just slightly less than one-third of its raw weight. Therefore, six pounds of raw lean meat will yield about two pounds of thoroughly dehydrated meat. For our next step, we need to cut the fat into small pieces about a half inch square. So place the fat in a pot on the stove and heat it up to a temperature between 225 and 250 degrees. And you don't gain anything from getting it any hotter than that other than destroying the fatty acids, which we want to do as little as possible. Now for the first 10 minutes you want to keep this on medium-high heat and you want to stir it about every minute and this will allow enough of the fat to be liberated to coat the bottom of the pot without burning the bottom of the fat. After about 10 minutes, you'll see a pool of fat forming on the bottom of the pot, which should be merrily boiling away. Uh, you can rest a little bit now and stir it maybe only every five minutes, just to keep things well mixed. After about 30 minutes, the liquid fat should have risen enough to cover the chunks, and it should look like a rolling boil. So as this liquid rises, you can go ahead and lower the temperature down to about 230. After about an hour, the major boiling action will have stopped and there'll just be small bubbles rising from the fat. About 90% of the cracklings will be a chestnut brown in color. So use a strainer to separate these and set them aside with salt to enjoy as snacks later. They're really, really good. And if you don't like them or don't want to eat them, you can set them aside to cool for dog treats. We now have to weigh the amount of ground meat 
and the amount of rendered animal fat. We have to have the same quantities. So you probably have to remove some of the excess fat. Place the remaining fat on the stove. Keep it about 120 degrees. Mix the shredded meat into the melted fat and stir it until it's well blended. Then add the blueberries and mix it again. This is how it should look. The fat should be absorbed or coating the meat fibers. There should be very little or no liquid fat pooling in the bottom of the pot. Now, following the instructions from the Lost Weights, you can store it in Ziploc plastic bags and press flat, removing as much air as possible, and therefore preventing the fat from going rancid. This should keep the pemmican from spoiling for a few years without refrigeration. So let's do that. And here's what I got. Pemmican is the ultimate survival food, no matter if you want to bug out or bug in. 10 pounds of pemmican would supply food for two full weeks of camping activities at three quarters of a pound per day, providing 2,200 calories. In survival mode, the same 10 pounds of pemmican would supply energy for almost a full month. This was just one awesome chapter in The Lost Ways, but you won't believe the survival skills we've lost to history. And that's what this book is all about, saving our forefathers' skills.